Welcome back to Derek's Zoo Videos, where your guy Derek, that's me, shows you around some of the best zoos in the US. For the first time in over a year, we're touring at one of my personal favorites, the Toledo Zoo and Aquarium. I've mentioned a few times on my channel that one of the reasons the Toledo Zoo stands out is their impressive collection of smaller life forms spread out in four fantastic buildings. Today, we'll be looking at the oldest of those buildings, the Reptile House. Beginning construction in 1934 and opening later that same year, the Reptile House cost a total of $150,000 and was built using scavenged materials from nearby abandoned buildings. Over time, while the interior design has been updated, the overall structure and the exterior of the building has remained largely unchanged preserving the original architecture and the building's historic feel. So now, join me in walking into the world of reptiles. Located in a dead-end plaza alongside the elephants and the Tembo Trail entry path is the stone-pillared entrance that dubs the building Reptilia, the scientific class name for reptiles. Directly inside, replacing a massive life-size Quetzalcoatl statue in a recent makeover, is an open-air home for Galapagos giant tortoises. Colossal, slow-moving giants who can reach over 5 feet in length and weigh over 500 pounds. These individuals don't quite live up to the giant part of their name yet, but you can find a full-grown Galapagos tortoise elsewhere in the zoo. Moving to the right, the giant theme is continued with the world's longest snake, the reticulated python, averaging 13 to 16 feet long, but some individuals may grow to over 20 feet. Continuing along the front wall is a peculiar mix of emerald tree boas and blue poison dart frogs who use eposomatic coloration to deter predators, but if that doesn't dissuade the attacker, they're met with a toxic snack that may even kill them. Next to them is the black tail cribbo, a type of indigo snake that couples its normally docile temperament with excessive aggression when in the presence of prey. And finishing out this first row is the spiny soft shell, one of the building's local residents Softshell turtles are characterized by their flatter, more rubbery shells, which lack the epidermal scoots that harden other turtles' shells. Instead, the spiny softshell has tiny spines along the front edge of its shell, which give the turtle its name. The next row of terrariums starts with a bang with the Gaboon Viper, the largest of Africa's vipers, sporting the longest fangs of any venomous snake. Despite this, Gaboon Vipers are generally calm and rarely bite humans. Moving along is an interesting mix that includes a copperhead that I didn't get footage of, as well as the harmless corn snake, the larger but still non-venomous northern pine snake, who is cuddled up with the more infamous eastern diamondback. North America's largest venomous snake, even edging out their slightly more commonly known western cousins who can also be found in Toledo, just not in this building. When ambushing prey, the Eastern Diamondback may lay in wait for up to a week in the same location before capturing a meal or moving on. Transporting back to Africa with another venomous wonder, the Red Spitting Cobra. As their name implies, spitting cobras are able to projectile spit their venom into the eyes of a predator or prey from up to 8 feet away with deadly accuracy. There is even some speculation that some cobras developed this ability to spit their venom specifically to combat threats from early hominids. While the venom is highly toxic, it is not deadly to humans, rather serving to give the snake time to flee while its pursuer is impaired. However, for young red spitting cobras, one of the greatest threats may be older cobras, since the species has been recorded cannibalizing their own kind. Turning the corner is an aquatic environment for a snake-necked turtle, who didn't really show, 
Next up is the prehensile tailed skink, one of the few reptiles to give birth to live young. It also goes by several other names including the monkey tailed skink, giant skink, and zebra skink. On their other side was another appreciatively active snake, the Baron's Racer, a medium sized arboreal colubrid snake from Argentina, Paraguay, and Bolivia. While the Baron's Racer is usually green, they also come in blue and brown varieties. Interestingly, the Baron's Racer may use constriction or venom when predating on a variety of smaller creatures from frogs and lizards to small mammals. Baron's Racers and other members of the family Calubridae are rear fang snakes, meaning they have smaller fangs located further back in their mouth, which are used more for holding on to prey than injecting venom. Many of these snakes do actually inject smaller amounts of a milder venom, leading some of them to be labeled non-venomous since the venom is too weak to affect humans. The Baron's Racer, however, is considered mildly venomous. Perfectly paralleling the world's longest snake directly across from it is the world's heaviest snake, the green anaconda, who I almost always see submerged in their pool. From here, a small hallway connects the two main portions of the building. Lining the sides of the hallway are two tanks for stink pots and black-breasted leaf turtles. Around the corner is a row of smaller terrariums that house green tree skinks, hailing from the forest of the Philippines, New Guinea, and throughout Indo-Australia. They are not very picky when it comes to their habitat, with one population found on a tiny island that contained just four palm trees. Like several other reptiles we've seen already, the green tree skink is popular as an exotic pet, partially due to their attractive glossy green scales. There's also leaf-tailed and Madagascar day geckos, as well as the Jackson's chameleon, the mini triceratops of the reptile world. Although only the males have the signature horns, which they use to defend their territory, locking horns with other males much like a triceratops might have. Chameleons have a number of amazing adaptations. Perhaps most well known is their ability to change color, but how exactly does that work? The chameleon has special skin cells called chromatophores, which vary in size and color and are able to shift around to form darker and lighter pigments. Chameleons also have wicked vision, able to rotate each eye individually up to 180 degrees so that they could look forward and backwards at the same time to keep a close eye on their surroundings. Rounding out this row is the Whiptail Lizard. For any of the ladies watching, have you ever wondered if things would be better if you just did away with guys entirely? Well that's exactly what the Grasslands Whiptail Lizard did. They're all females. Seriously, all of them. In fact, many species of Whiptail Lizards are female only and are able to reproduce asexually. Past these tanks is the Jewels of the Rainforest with more smaller tanks filled with colorful poison dart frogs, none of which were really in the mood for the camera. So moving on to the reptile house's big star, Baru, a massive 17 foot long, 1500 pound saltwater crocodile. Baru arrived from Australia in 2013 as part of the zoo's temporary wild walkabout attraction. Although his exact age is unknown, Based on his size, Baru likely spent over 50 years living as a wild crocodile before he was captured in 2010, after becoming a danger to local ranchers and their cattle. Because of his impressive size, special interest was taken in finding him a proper long-term home, leading to his journey to Toledo, where at least at one time, he was believed to be the largest reptile on display in North America. Saltwater crocodiles are the largest reptiles in the world and among the animal kingdom's most successful predators, which is perhaps even more impressive when you consider crocodiles have remained almost completely unchanged for millions of years. Speaking of animals that are truly prehistoric, the Tuatara has been around since the Triassic period. Although they closely resemble lizards, the Tuatara is actually the last surviving member of a reptile lineage that thrived in the age of the dinosaurs. 
in addition to being a long-lived species, some individual tuatars themselves can live to be over a hundred years old. By the tuataras is another row of smaller terrariums, whose residents include mottled rock rattlesnakes, a smaller rattlesnake with dichromatic color variation between sexes, the endangered Ethiopian mountain viper was known from just three specimens as recently as 1995, and has only been found in just five locations within Ethiopia. Crossing back into the building's main, larger room, and moving to the right is the world's longest venomous snake, the King Cobra. The longest King Cobra ever measured was an incredible 18 feet long. They are known for specializing in eating other snakes, including other cobras. But these kings also have a caring side. They are the only known snake species to build nests for their eggs, which they guard ferociously until the young are born. The next three tanks hold the Blood Python, named for the blood red markings on their skin. The Aruba Island Rattlesnake is endemic to the island of, that's right, Aruba, who would have thought? The common chukwala, a personal favorite of mine, has excellent camouflage to blend in with its native desert habitats, but that didn't stop me from spotting one on my Arizona trip earlier this year. When threatened, a chukwala will dart into a small crevice and then inflate their usually loose folds of skin making them impossible to pull out. If this tactic doesn't work, the chukwala is also among the species of lizards that can drop their tail in order to flee a predator. Our next trio of tanks features Haitian green anoles. The crested or green basilisk is famous for its ability to run on its hind legs, including across water. They are also able to remain submerged below the water's surface for up to 10 minutes. The arboreal cask-headed iguana rarely leaves the trees and can be found ranging throughout Mexico and Central America. Now in the home stretch, the Fiji banded iguana wasn't in a good spot for filming, but I do have some nice photos from previous visits. Next door is a trio of snakes that includes the copperhead, the black rat snake, and the timber rattlesnake. Normally you'd expect to find rattlesnakes on the ground, but this isn't always the case with the timber rattlesnake, which is an excellent climber and has been found in trees at a height of over 80 feet. The second to last terrarium has spiny-tailed agamas and pancake tortoises. And finally, alongside two other species I didn't see, is the Kimberley Rock Monitor of Northwestern Australia, a smaller member of the monitor family, topping out at about 3 feet. They are fairly rare in zoos, with the first hatching in a U.S. zoo occurring in 2019. That wraps up the exhibits inside the reptile house, but before we conclude the tour, I wanted to quickly mention that around the backside of the building is several ponds for native turtles that I didn't think to film, and I wouldn't be surprised if even some of the locals don't know they're there. If you're visiting Toledo and want to see even more reptiles, be sure to check out the newer Prometica Museum of Natural History, which houses part two of the zoo's amazing reptile collection. And with that concludes another episode of Exhibit Tours and a look at one of the best reptile houses I've come across on my zoo travels. As always, thank you for watching and stay for a look at what zoo will be making its Exhibit Tours debut next month.